Thanks, Andre. Uh, hello, everybody, and I thank organizers for the opportunity to speak here. And what I'm going to do is to elaborate a little bit on the topic that David mentioned in his keynote about mutation calling and try to join him in voicing the concern, the message that it's not an easy problem and the problem that's not actually completely solved as yet. And uh, what we are all trying to do is to characterize the disease and treat the disease. And we almost take for granted the fact that we sequence uh, samples and we obtain mutations, let alone more complex variations. And uh, in the ideal world, that's how it is supposed to look as uh, in this figure where we have uh, the upper panel is normal, the panel at the bottom is tumor, and I think everyone would agree that this is a very clear example of somatic heterozygous mutation. If we could get our sequencing to this point, then probably I wouldn't be giving this talk and we just sequence, read out the mutations, done. Now, there are many other examples where the outcome is not as clear as in here we have quite a few issues in sequencing. First of all, the colored reads uh, that indicate that their mate is somewhere on a different chromosome and note that this occurs in normal as well. So most likely it's some mapping problem. We are hitting some region that has highly homologous region elsewhere. So we are not that certain about the mapping itself. If you look in the tumor, yes, we have a few reads that carry uh, an alternative allele. But somehow all those reads go in one direction. This alternative uh, base always close to the end of the read. So when you think about all those things, you start growing suspicious. And that's pretty much what we are all trying to do to, with all those uh, mutation callers to separate good and reliable events from, uh, from all kinds of noises that could arise at the library construction level, at the sequencing level, at the mapping level. Uh, and uh, the types of errors we are considering is pretty much no event when uh, just the sequencing is noisy. As in this example, just ends of the reads are all C's and accidentally it may look as a somatic mutation. And uh, actually every base is at risk in a sense too. We, we could have this systematic artifact elsewhere. Uh, alternatively, we can be overcalling. We can have, especially if we have low coverage in normal, we, just due to random sampling, we might be unable to see the alternative allele in normal uh, and erroneously call this germline event uh, in the diagram two uh, as somatic. And given all the complications that were discussed here many times, like presence of tumor in normal contamination if it's an adjacent tissue, it's really hard to tell in this case, uh, is this normal germline event uh, with uh, just sampling bias, or it's actually normal with little oversampling it's uh, undersampling of germline allele or oversampling of contaminating tumor allele in normal. So it, we, we don't know. Uh, so this uh, whole project uh, within the TCJ, the cross-center comparison was initiated with the goal of uh, comparing, evaluating, and improving uh, the mutation calling pipelines uh, between different centers. And it's set up as uh, selecting a set of reference samples uh, and everybody runs their pipeline on this same set, call mutations. Uh, compare and contrast all the callers against each other. And uh, it, it, it has multiple benefits, and uh, just one of them in particular, uh, you can think uh, that it's relatively easy even, can be, can be painstaking to go through all your calls, manually review them, but at least that way you can weed out false positives. Now, things that you didn't call, you don't know where to look for, and it's extremely helpful when someone else made a call. You can go to that particular site, review it, ideally validate, of course, and that gives you the idea of your false negative modes. Uh, but 
in general, at the end of the day, of course, we need validation data. We cannot just look at those sites and make decisions based on our emotions. <laughs> so uh, what we were uh, pro uh, trying to do, uh, well, uh, the, the proposal we are uh, having here is that RNA-seq can provide an extremely useful vehicle uh, for validation for, for many reasons, uh, including technical ones such as uh, now RNA-seq data are going to be produced simultaneously in parallel with DNA sequencing, which slashes probably three to four months that would be required for targeted resequencing after uh, the initial round of DNA sequencing is done and uh, mutation calling is performed. So uh, for, from the third phase of this cross-center uh, cross comparison exercise, uh, we selected 20 lung squamous uh, TCG samples that also have uh, RNA-seq data from uh, generated at UNC. And uh, just like all other data sets in this cross-center comparison, uh, those samples were analyzed at Broad, Washington University, UCSC, and Baylor College. Uh, so we uh, compare them and try to see if it's feasible to use RNA-seq uh, for the validation. Now, uh, just to, to start with what we are looking at, and uh, this is very similar to what uh, David has shown, uh, we can start from simply characterizing the mutation calls generated by different centers. Uh, sort of an agnostic view. We don't know what is true, uh, what is false positive, what is false negative for each caller, but at least we can see that, yes, there is a decent overlap, so we agree more often than not, which is great. And there are some calls unique to each center, and uh, I'm showing only three centers here. I'm really not good at thinking in four dimensions. Uh, but the overlaps with Baylor are very similar. You can slice your data either way, and. Uh, the result will be qualitative, qualitatively pretty much the same. Now we can try to uh, go dig a little deeper and see what are the characteristics of those calls that are shared between the centers or that are unique to each particular center. And uh, again, to keep things simple, I'm showing here only the calls from the center of the diagram, those 229 that are shared between all, all centers and uh, three uh, ears that are unique to each center. I'm not showing pairwise comparisons just to avoid making the plot too busy. But even in this case, you see that uh, there is a central black part where everybody agrees. And the unique calls made only by a single center, they do show some distinct patterns. You can see that broad, for instance, uh, blue points tends to call uh, at, low, at lower coverage and at lower allelic fraction. And uh, Wash U, for instance, does go into uh, lower coverage, not that much into lower allelic fraction, but at the same time they call more events at, uh, uh, sorry, more events at a high allelic fraction, which uh, Again, without validation data, we don't know whether it's true or not. I can only tell that this particular sample has purity 0.6. So, but it doesn't necessarily rule out those, those events. Uh, oops. Okay, so uh, just uh, another view at the same uh, data actually is to try to see what's the distribution of different statistics. So. Uh, again, uh, I'm just conveying the same information as uh, in the previous plot here, uh, just in a different way. So uh, what I'm showing here is depth of coverage. Uh, gray bars uh, is a depth of coverage for that center part of the diagram where everybody agrees. And blue bars here are calls made only by Broad. So again, uh, it's, it's uh, biased towards lower lower coverage, same applies to wash you, so uh, they also go to uh, low coverage. UC, uh, UCSC is more uniform here. So just some information we can glean uh, from this straightforward comparison. We can also look at allelic fractions and again uh, see that yes, there is some difference. There are some parts of this configuration space into different 
coolers venture trying to make more cools. Uh, it is somewhat instructive to see what coolers are telling about themselves uh, when they provide the quality scores. And uh, that's a good sign that these are, for instance, all the quality scores reported by broad cooler for the center of the diagram. And these are the quality scores for the calls that are unique to Broad. So we are making more calls somewhere where nobody did, but we are less sure, which is sort of intuitive. Again, one would expect that where everybody agrees, this, this is probably the most reliable set of the calls. Uh, so th this is great. And uh, if you go into manual review and start looking into those calls made uniquely, specifically, but any given, by, by any given center, some of them look like noise, or at least they're questionable. Most are convincing. I will show a couple of examples. This comes from Broad, where, uh, again, upper panel is normal, middle panel is tumor, and I'm just jumping a little bit ahead of myself. The bottom panel is RNA-seq. And you can see that uh, it does look like uh, a somatic event except that there are many, many mapping quality zero reads in here, so there is definitely some, e there are issues with uh, alienability of this region. In RNA-seq, uh, the reads are shorter here, and you see that not a single read got aligned with non-zero mapping quality, and none, none of those carry the mutation. So it's, uh, it, it's a very questionable one. Now, this is, this is an example of uh, Washington University call where Again, it's really hard to tell. You do have a couple of reads here in the normal carrying the same alternative allele. It's, it's really hard to distinguish whether it's uh, sampling error, whether it's tumor in the normal, or it's, it's, it's really a little bit undersampled germline event. Uh, the other way. This is uh, just a, apparently a blunder from Baylor, Baylor College. Uh, there is an error mode that occurs in a couple, maybe three or four of their calls where clearly germline event is called a somatic. So some things, some things are bad or questionable, but mostly they are fine. So we need a lot of validation data to compare those tools. And uh, again, our proposal is to use RNA-seq uh, as a validation set. Uh, it's not completely orthogonal, uh, but at least it uses independent library construction, different protocol. It is though the same sequencing technology and more often than not, it's even the same aligner. So if you have some mapping, uh, some errors due to mapping artifacts, they may carry on to RNA-seq as well. Now, what do we call uh, a mutation? What do we call a validation event? One way to do it, an extremely conservative way, is to just do de novo calling in RNA-seq, which is probably an overkill in this particular case. We already made those de novo calls from DNA sequencing, we were conservative. And now the question is, what's the probability to make a mistake in RNA-seq, not elsewhere, but just at that location? We have a prior. So in principle, we can set a much lower threshold. Basically, if we just observe any or some evidence for an event in RNA-seq, we can call the, uh, the original call uh, validated. Now, there is a question of power, of course, and we have been showing this diagram quite a few times. Uh, depending on what coverage you get in RNA-seq or in, in, in DNA-seq for that matter, you have a finite probability to observe the event at all. And, it, and it's a function of allelic fraction, of course. So if your original call has allelic fraction 10%, you need really many reads to observe it, and even more reads to be able to absolutely confidently say, no, it's not there. So, uh, fortunately, uh, allelic fraction is not a huge issue. Uh, it's, it's, it is an issue, uh, but it's solvable in a sense that there is a beautiful correlation between uh, allelic fraction in DNA-seq and RNA-seq, which means if we make a call in DNA-seq, we can take this allelic fraction and we can estimate the power given the whatever coverage we got at that site in RNA-seq, we can com compute the probability to observe it. And uh, basically, I'm uh, running out of time and just jumping to some preliminary results. So uh, we can look, again, using uh, not even statistical procedure, but using cutoffs right now and asking for just, again, since allelic fraction is expected 
to be consistent. We just look for a presence of at least two reads in RNA-seq carrying the uh, alternative allele. And uh, you see that uh, if you increase your th coverage threshold, so if uh, we ask for at least five reads in RNA-seq, then many sites are covered. Uh, some are validated, 80% actually. Many of those will be probably lost. Uh, actually, the validation rate might be higher if we did, statistic did it statistically because there are many low allelic fraction events here that just didn't get sampled. Uh, if you increase the coverage for RNA-seq, uh, uh, you can see that the validation rate grows because now we, have, we definitely have less sites covered that, that well. But the validation rate grows, so now we, are start, now we start seeing uh, alternative allele for those low allelic fraction reads. Okay, and uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, all the message uh, that I was trying to convey here, that we have this uh, framework, uh, and thanks to the leadership of this whole project, thanks to David and Gedi and Washington University for making those things happen and having this uh, set up for comparing and improving the calls. We are working on validating mutations and uh, it looks like RNA-seq provides a really good platform for uh, getting a more accurate objective view at the quality of the mutations and I think I will conclude at that point. Okay. Thanks, Andre. Uh, are there questions? I have a quick one. Um, how many of these centers have uh, made their callers available publicly, and how close are the R&D calculations to what you get from, say, Varscan or something from one of these centers? Uh, our caller is, uh, well, we are working on publishing it. Is that right, Chris? <laughs> And uh, I think uh, Washington University published their caller already. Uh, Ours is, is still pre-publication. We're still working on it. So basically, the but plan is definitely to make everything available, but Wash it's you, not yet. WashU set were uh, generated from Varscan and Semantic Sniper, both of which are available. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the, what was the second part of your question? Uh, how close, uh, I couldn't hear you real. how close is whatever is shown here to the results obtained with publicly available versions? Uh, well, we, we exchange, we, we, do, we don't run uh, our, our other centers' callers actually per se, we exchange the results. But uh, I presume it's very close. One so more. On the issue of coverage at ARNA level and the fraction of validation. Uh, is it done on the same genes on artificially different coverages or on different populations of genes? Because genes at lower expression have lower coverage and that population could also be enriched in false positives. Uh, I am not sure. I would argue that it's not necessarily the case. Uh, low covered genes, unless there is something special about their context and uh, nucleotide content. Mm -hmm. I don't see why they should have more false positives. This can be easily checked if you just get out part of the data and see for Absolutely, the yeah. genes. Uh, we, we did actually some, uh, th there is less data available. There are some samples, they are not part of this exercise. We didn't share them with other centers, but we do have a couple of BAMs where, a couple of samples where we did uh, our, uh, exome and uh, whole, whole genome sequencing. And if you contrast exome calls, tr try to do the same kind of exercise, trying to validate exome calls in DNA, in whole genome DNA sequencing, your numbers are pretty close. So it's uh, not a proof, but reassuring. So some, some, we do lose coverage for some genes in RNA-seq. That's, that's a given, yeah, I, but I don't think it's it biased. I'm, I'm, I'm clear, so, so low coverage in the DNA is definitely a problem. Low coverage in the RNA-seq means that you can't use it to validate. Is that reasonable? I mean, yeah. that's kind of the perspective. So that's what my impression is. Yes, some genes cannot be assessed by RNA-seq, but it doesn't introduce an additional bias. Okay. 
Thanks a lot, Andre. Thank you.